Um, last tutorial, we created a um, our packet reader and our packet writer classes, um, and we also learned how to structure our packets using headers, so we know what does what, what packet does this and that and blah blah blah. And now this time, we will be using serialization. Now to do this, we will be using a binary formatter to serialize our classes and structures to binary format and then they'll be written to our memory stream. Now, ease with serialization is 10 out of 10. Size, however, is sacrificed a bit. For example, if we were sending Bob and just Bob, if we used our current packet uh, writer class, it would only cost about seven bytes to send this with our current class. If we had a class or a structure and we set that to Bob, it would cost about 141 bytes to send that. Just Bob alone in the class. So as you can see, size is sacrificed a bit and I personally prefer minimal size over ease, but to each his own, and serialization might come in handy for a few of you, so let's do it. Head back over to our packet writer and our packet reader. If you haven't watched the past tutorial, I suggest you watch that so you know what's going on here. So now, if we're going to write our classes, let's make a new method. Let's name this public void write object. Let's just name this just object. Now we'll create a new binary formatter. BF equals new binary formatter. BF got serialized to our memory stream and our object. And that's about it for that. Now let's head down to our packet reader and let's add public void actually public t read object t okay. now binary formatter bf equals new binary formatter well actually it makes no sense to create a new instance every single time head back up to packet writer and add a new variable private binary formatter bf and in our constructor bf equals new binary formatter get rid of this and just type in the underscore and bf dot serialize now head back down to packet um, reader and do the same thing private binary formatter bf and this will be if equals new binary formatter now read object return bf dot deserialize our memory our uh, memory stream so type in base stream and now cast it to t all right now let's test this let's just head over to program we don't need to use a form for this and let's make a new class. Um, let's call it person. Now set an attribute to let .NET know that this class is in fact serializable. So let's add a couple of variables: public string name and public date time birthday. And now let's create our person instance equals new person. Person.name equals you can use your name and your birth date. 
person dot birth date equals new date time ninety four nine and twenty two. Now let's create our packet writer. We don't since we're just testing right now. We don't need to use any headers. So let's just write person. That'll go under object and byte data equals packet writer dot get bytes. And now packet reader PR equals new packet reader data. And we'll just use our same variable person equals um, PR dot read object we want to cast to a person and that'll call and then this will read our um, class or our structure from our uh, packet and return it and now we can write to the console name and line birthday person dot name person dot birthday and now let's run it and as you can see our class has been serialized to a byte or to our um, packet and then we sent it and we read our class and um, the name and the birthdays right there now to show you the difference between doing this with serialization and doing this manually I will show you the size difference so we'll just, we'll just do serializing uh, serialization first console dot right line data dot length and now we'll create a new instance for a packet writer pw dot write we'll do this manually person dot name pw dot write person dot birth date dot two string so it can produce the same result or actually Actually, yes. Birthdate dot two binary. And now data equals packet writer dot get bytes. Console dot write line. Data dot length. And we don't need this right now. So as you can see, it's not that much of a difference, but also depending on what you have in the class, it might um, become a little more bulky. But as a size difference here isn't that much. But you never know what you're dealing with, but that's just a personal opinion of mine. But back on topic, that is how you use how um how we can use serialization with our packet reader and our packet writer. It can make things a lot easier in certain cases. And even with this, you can still also use your headers, such as let's see, public headers header. And let's um read this. Just name this some class and public string. This will be for um, our text. So let's see public string text. Header equals headers dot text. Now some class. This be some class. 
some class dot text equals from this class. And now um, packet writer pw equals new packet writer pw dot write some class byte data equals some class dot Oh, that was a zone out. PW dot get bytes. Now packet reader PR equals new packet reader data. Some class equals PR dot read. Some class console dot write means switch. Some class dot header case. Some class and headers.txt console.write line some class.txt and let's run this and as you can see that is the I mean that is the text that we placed into our class and the headers are still able to be used so we extended our um, packet reader and our packet writer with to work with serialization so we can write classes and structures to our packet and that's about it for now I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next tutorial and just a note I forgot to mention with the current method be added to our packet writer and our packet reader you can write any structure in any class as long as it's serializable such as date time etc etc if you're not sure if it's serializable or not just type it out highlight it press F12 if you see I serializable or if it has an attribute of serializable then you can use it with the current method that we added just a note